As a photographer, you probably have lots of older JPEG photos that are small, they're already processed, and they lack the detail and pop that you're looking for in your editing right now. This is where On One Photo Raw comes in. It allows you to create the exact look that you're going for with any photograph, processed or raw. Let's jump into Photo Raw and I'll show you just how easy it is to enhance your older JPEG files. If you enjoy the video, hit that like button, and as always, subscribe to our channel for all new editing tips and tricks. So inside of Photo Raw here, I have this portrait, and if I go up to the info pane or this info tab, it was taken in 2010, so it's an older JPEG photograph that's about 1.6 megabytes, so relatively small. And I wanted to talk about portraits in this video simply because portraiture, whether it's a single person or it's your friends, your family, you know, older JPEG photos are really fun to relook at or re-enhance. <clears throat> older JPEG photos are really fun to go back and take a second look at with the new editing technologies that is available today. And um, specifically inside of Photo Raw, there's so many tools that you can use to enhance and remodify these older JPEGs. And I thought portraiture would be a great sort of genre to showcase that for. So we have our JPEG. I'm just going to go into the levels tab here so that we can see the histogram. And the first thing I wanna do is just develop the tone and color a little bit. So inside of my develop tab here, I'm not going to modify too much of the tone and color, but I do wanna add in a bit of contrast and maybe just boost the midtones a little bit. So let's just pull up on the contrast. And then I'll just add in a little bit more midtones there. Pull up on those middle gray, some of those skin tones in there. So if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, Very subtle, very subtle adjustment. We're really going to be doing the majority of the styling and enhancing inside of the portrait tab and with Resize AI. So now what I wanna do is just, just go into the portrait tab here and let's do a little bit of retouching. And with the portrait AI filter, it's automatically found her face for us and it's created a mask there. So we can go in and modify these settings and these sliders and it will strictly adjust inside of the mask where her face is at. Now, when it comes to retouching, I typically zoom in quite a bit to the face so that I can strictly see what I'm working on. And we really don't need a whole lot of retouching here, but what I typically do in the skin retouching section of Portrait AI is I'll just pull up on it all the way so that it's at 100. And then I'll open up my details menu here and then I can modify these sliders as I see fit. So the blemishes seems fine. I don't think I need to add in any blemishes, but I, what I typically do is I'll pull up on the smoothing a little bit more and also on the detail a little bit more, and that'll give it more of a detailed look rather than a blurry look, which I really like. So if I turn this off and on, it's quite intense, but it's getting rid of all of those imperfections and blemishes in her skin here. Now, obviously it's a little strong, so let's just pull back on the retouching a little bit, maybe around 75 or so. And I think that looks really great. Now let's just head down here and one thing I like using the Portrait AI filter for, especially when I'm dealing with uh, a brighter scene or a scene that's a bit darker, is I can use this face section here to modify the brightness. And I probably don't need too much more brightness here. I might even pull back on the brightness there. And then I'll head down here because I darkened the face and I'll use this eyes section and I'll give the eyes just a little bit more brightness. And then I'll make them pop out a little bit more within the scene. Maybe a little bit more whitening. Add in a little bit of detail. Be careful with the detail slider. A little bit goes a long way. We'll also pull up on this dark circle slider and that will eliminate a little bit of those dark patches underneath her eyes right there. And then we'll pull up on this brow enhance slider to give those brows a bit more detail and some texture. And I think that looks pretty good so far. The one last thing we could do in here is just add in a little bit more lip vibrance and maybe a little bit more brightness, but I think that looks pretty great. Let's just head up and turn this off and on. And I'm really enjoying the retouching. I think it's really doing an awesome job of just revamping the portrait a little bit. We can always modify the opacity slider. So if it's looking too intense, pull back on that opacity slider to where you see fit. So if we head back out now, let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard. I'm really enjoying it. Now let's go into the effects tab here. Let's add a filter and we'll add one of my favorite filters for a little bit of light coming into the scene, the glow filter. And inside of the glow filter, let's just use this darker preset 
And you can really see how it works its wonders on the hair here. It really gives it that soft, glowy look. Just looks wonderful. But it's looking a little wonky on the face. So what we can do, let's go back to the portrait tab. Let's go into the masking options. Let's copy the mask that it created for us earlier. Let's go back into the effects tab. Let's go into that glow filter, paste the mask. And remember we have to invert it so that it applies it everywhere else. And we have sort of a harsh edge going around the face here. So let's go into the masking options and let's just use this feather slider and that will eliminate any of those harsh edges around that mask. So now let's add one last adjustment. I'm gonna go into the local adjustments tab and I'll rename this warm face because we're gonna use it to warm up the face. And I'll double click this exposure slider to set that to zero. And I'll just use this temperature, crank it up to 10. And I'll just use a nice big brush. This is around 900. Maybe drop it down one to around 800. And I'll just paint that on to the face. That way I can use this adjustments opacity slider to kind of fine tune how warm her face is. And I think around 20 works really nice just to bring a little bit more warmth back into the portrait. So let's hit the backslash key on our keyboard to view the original. And this is after the enhancements inside of Photo Raw. I think it's looking really nice so far. One thing I want to do to it is just resize it. I think because if we look back at the info, it's around 1.6 megabytes, you know, 2200 by around 1400, pretty small photograph. So what if we wanna maybe make it bigger, um, blow it up, print it much larger, we can do that really easily and maintain any bit of detail that we have using Resize AI. So let's grab Resize AI here by just going into the tab there. And right out of the gate, let's go up to this photo size menu. This is going to show us our pixel dimensions of our photo. You can see it's at 100% right here. Let's just resize this up 400%. Now we have our pixel dimensions. They're four times that. And we can see up here it's 400% the size it was earlier. So let's zoom into the hair here. And we can really see the detail that we're creating with resizing. And it's just looking really amazing. And we've maintained all of that detail. And it's at 400%. So we've modified the image in a stylistic way, we've enhanced the look of it and we've also enhanced the size of it, making it a much larger photograph that we can then print or send out to our friends and family, whatever it may be. We have a much better looking photograph and it's four times the size. So let's just zoom in here real quick again and let me show you the before and after here. So this is without any of the resize and this is with resize AI. It's looking really good to me. Let's just head down and choose done. 